Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Umes. Quick shout out to my new or updated patrons, Fred, Steven, Dan, Morton, and Christian. Thank you all for choosing to support the channel. First up today, we have another Tesla petition. This one is for President Biden, asking him to acknowledge Tesla's leadership with regard to EVs. I will link this below. So far, 32,000 people have signed, and I believe this stemmed from this video over the weekend. So if you haven't seen it, you definitely need to have a watch. It is actually painful to watch. If you've already seen it, feel free to skip ahead. You hosted a meeting with the president and a bunch of CEOs from various industries this week to talk about Build Back Better. And, and you invited the, the CEO of Ford and GM, and President Biden did tweet out a video of himself with, with Mary Barra of GM talking about building electric vehicles in this country. I don't know if you are on Twitter, if you noticed that Elon Musk responded to it. He said, starts with a T, ends with a A, ESL in the middle, and then, and then went on you know, to respond to a few other people in, in maybe a little more insulting way around the president. Why, why do you not invite Musk to these meetings, this one and, and others that you've had specifically on electric vehicles when they are at, on the front lines of producing electric vehicles and the biggest player in this country? Well, I would say this was a great meeting. We had CEOs uh, from sectors across the economy. Uh, not just the automotive sector, uh, but the, the technology sector, uh, the uh, industrial sector, the healthcare sector, all across. And what was really interesting about the perspectives that the CEOs were bringing were that all of them were underscoring that things like investing in childcare or in education and early education are core economic issues right now, given our need to get people back into the workforce, our need to help more people who have caregiving responsibilities actually uh, work. And so that these issues are really core economic issues, even though sometimes they're labeled as social spending. Look, when it comes to electric vehicles, we want the United States to be the place where the electric vehicle uh, revolution is driven and where we gain more of the global export share and we're creating more good jobs here in America. So that's not about any one individual uh, company. That's about, from the policy side, laying the foundation so that here in the United States, companies feel confident to invest, expand, and build, not only assemble those vehicles, but build the batteries and the other components that go in, in a way that creates good jobs for communities. Yeah. So we, we t we, we're no, looking that, at this. That's what he's doing. Anyone, well, we're looking at any, anyone who's investing and in helping move the United States and position the United States uh, to be a leader in the electric vehicle revolution, somebody that we're working with. We obviously have a, a, a variety of different ways of engaging with companies and CEOs. But from our perspective, we want the United States to be the place where electric vehicles and those, their components are built and to the ultimate end benefit of the workers and the families and the jobs and the economic opportunity that will create. One of my patrons, Steven, has updated his website, Tesla Price Targets. This will be linked below. This is an awesome tool showing different people and where their Tesla price target is. He did add interactive visuals for both institutional and retail. So if you click retail, you get this scatter plot with each creator and then the price target plotted with followers on the X and the price target on the Y. Two quick corrections from last week. So I went back and rewatched the Tesla Q4 call. First of all, Elon said 250 million. He actually said a quarter million Cybertrucks is the aspirational goal per year. So I said 1 million. I misheard what he said. So that's number one. And number two, Tesla's expedite and reserve costs in Q4 were actually 360 million, not the 120 million that I said last week. Over the weekend, we got some news that Tesla bought a rail track to make the commute to Giga Berlin a little easier. A spokeswoman for the Ministry of Infrastructure and State Planning confirmed on Thursday the automaker had purchased an existing rail track from the German Regional Railway Group, DRE. Tesla plans to use the track to run a special train for employees from the nearby town of Erkner to a new stop just south of Giga Berlin. So naturally, over the weekend, there was much debate around Optimus, the Tesla bot. My question right now, before we dive into this more in future episodes, is this. How long will it be before we see a functional Tesla bot doing some form of useful work in a Tesla factory, let me know your best guess below. I will put mine down there as well. Tesla supercharger access for non-EVs has been expanded to now include France, the Netherlands, and Norway. Now the question becomes, well, what if you're visiting one of these locations? The pilot is currently limited to EV drivers who live in the following countries, those same three in addition to Germany and Belgium. Currently, Tesla is reviewing the experience, monitoring congestion, and they'll assess the feedback before they expand further. And a reminder for a Tesla owner, what are your specific benefits? Well, seamless integration of the charge post in the vehicle, 
optimized route planning, battery preconditioning, and the lowest supercharger pricing. Not to mention, if you're a Tesla shareholder, over the long term, this will have a strong impact on Tesla's earnings per share in the years to come. If you're in the US and worried about this coming to the States, just remember that only supercharger stations or stalls with a CCS2 adapter will be usable by non-Tesla EVs, at least for the foreseeable future, so you shouldn't worry too much just yet. The new version of the iOS app, and I believe this is also on Android now, is including charging stats for the past 31 days. It'll show you the total kilowatt hours charged, the total spent, it'll give you a breakdown of how much was at home versus at a supercharger and other, and then it'll show you an estimated gas savings as well. Previously, we had the JD Power Dependability Survey ranking Tesla not so well. However, over the weekend, we got the Experience Ownership Survey, where about 8,000 owners were surveyed, and the Tesla trifecta has dominated the ratings. Not much of a surprise. Model 3 topped the premium BEV list with a score of 777 out of 1,000. The Model Y was 740, and the Model S was at 756. Categories in the survey include cost of ownership, styling, reliability, quality, and battery range. Here's the breakdown for the premium BEV segment where the segment average was 770. And here are the results for the mass market battery EV with the Kia Nero actually leading the way with a Mustang Mach-E in a close second. We got some confirmation Tesla China is delivering Model 3 performance with the heated wipers. Remember, it's not the wiper itself that's heated, rather the area where the wiper sits. So far, reports have only had this on performance variants, but we should get this on all models in time. We got some images of a Berlin-made Model Y performance, and if you take a closer look, yes, it's just a picture, but the panel gaps seem to be excellent, talking about that micron precision that everybody has been expecting. Of course, this is just one test vehicle. However, it is still good to see and confirmation of the 11th letter being a B, meaning it's Berlin made. Delete Design is back at it again with another prototype user interface design for Tesla. So in my last prototype, we looked at putting setting shortcuts in this bottom bar to make them easier to access while the vehicle is in motion. But that made me realize we actually don't need to look at the screen at all. What if you could take five fingers and reach over and just push up? and maybe increase the fan speed. Maybe you wanna turn off the fan, so with your eyes still on the road, you could take five fingers, reach over, and just pull down and turn the fans off. Maybe you wanna change what these shortcuts do, so when the vehicle is parked, you could come in and configure these shortcuts. So maybe you, uh, by default, it's uh, increased fan speed or set fan speed to zero. Maybe you wanna change those up. Maybe you wanna assign left and right swipe gestures. Maybe you wanna assign different gestures uh, to four finger swipes and to three finger swipes. And the beautiful thing is that while this requires no attention from a driver while their eyes are on the road, uh, this can also be triggered from any point. So maybe you're watching your favorite show in theater mode and you need to open the glove box. You don't need to exit out. You can just assign a three finger gesture and swipe down, open the glove box from wherever you are. So is this something you think you'd like to see? These renderings were shared, so to be clear, this is not official. However, there's a chance that the solar panels on the roof of Giga Austin will actually spell out Tesla, and this is potentially what it would look like. So where is this speculation coming from? Well, from this image from a recent drone flyover, as you can vaguely see something potentially being spelled out. So we'll wait to see how things develop, but if this is close to the final version, that would be pretty awesome. One question I see kind of a lot is, what is the actual battery capacity of each factory? So let's start with Cato Road with a nameplate capacity of 10 gigawatt hours, which is quite a lot. So if you were making 75 kilowatt hour battery pack model wise, that would be capacity for 133,000 a year. Texas and Berlin are targeting 100 gigawatt hours, which would be 1.3 million models Y, which sounds great. And in Berlin, that would absolutely work. But in Texas, they're making the Cybertruck at 200 kilowatt hours per battery pack. That drops you down to 500,000 capacity. So what if you split them even Steven? Texas Model Y, 666,000, with the Cybertruck bringing in another 250,000. That's 916,000 units just with the battery supply on site. 916,000 units surely isn't enough, right? Well, don't forget, Giga Nevada still has a capacity of 39 gigawatt hours, which means at 75 kilowatt hour packs, that's a half million cars, which kind of tracks with Fremont's production. 
Shanghai in December did 70,000 units. That annualizes to 840,000 right there, and they're not even using the American cells, which means just from Shanghai and Nevada, that's 1.3 million. Add another 1.3 in Berlin and another 900,000 in Texas, and you're looking at some big, big numbers just with the capacity we already know about. Model 3 deliveries with the new AMD Ryzen chip have started in Canada. A user reported delivery of a Model 3 rear wheel drive vehicle with the AMD Ryzen chip, but so far it appears the new chip has not made its way east of BC or has been included on any Model Y deliveries in Canada as of yet. For all of 2021, the world plug-in vehicle sales, this is showing you the top 20, the Model 3 takes the number one spot, over 500,000 units sold, and the Model Y coming in third at 410,000. Breaking it down, with plug-in registrations jumping in 2021 108%, this was the highest yearly growth rate since 2012. Full BEVs grew 69% year over year, which was significantly faster than plug-in hybrids, which grew 31% year over year. So it's good to see full battery electric vehicles outpacing hybrids, but hybrids are still a part of the game, unfortunately. I guess, or fortunately, depending on your perspective. However, the final 2021 plug-in share was 9%, which 6.1% was full BEV. In case you missed it, over the weekend, this was shared by Dr. Surf, incredible insight from a current Tesla employee. This post is coming straight from the horse's mouth. I can say this because I've witnessed and helped build and watch the Model Y line here at Giga Austin since July last year. You'll have no idea what it takes, how many contractors and how much money and hard work it takes and time to build a line for a car like Tesla. Our equipment is state of the art. We have the best engineers, maintenance techs, workers from literally all over the world here to get this Model Y up and running. Now that we're making sellable cars, we can focus on the truck. I know the area where they are gonna build the Cybertruck. Trust me when I say it's gonna be done correctly, not half-assed. We are in the process of hiring over 15,000 employees this year. I know the frustration of the wait. This is the year we get this truck done. Not saying production-wise, but set the course for it. This truck is the future, so you want it done right. So hopefully a little hopium for everybody on the Cybertruck waitlist. Sawyer shared over 5,200 that he counted Model Y and Model 3 spotted at Shanghai's Luchao port, ready to be loaded on a cargo ship. This is the most Teslas I've ever seen in one place. Wu Wa says loading started today, January 30th. So Shanghai definitely fulfilling its title of the export hub. Tesla has published its Australian sales figures by way of agreement with the EV council. The supplied figure that we're running here was 15,000 2054 sales in 2021, putting the Shanghai built Model 3 in rarer air than most local analysts, including this one, expected. To say it was the dominant electric player is a colossal understatement. The next closest were the MG ZS with 1388 and the Porsche Taycan with 531. The Model 3 thus accounted for 75% of all EV sales. And two well known cars you've probably heard of that the Model 3 outsold in 2021 the Mazda 3 and the Toyota Camry. In other words, the Model 3 is not just a popular electric car, it's simply among the most popular vehicles in Australia, full stop. Shared by Tesla Club San Diego, we get a brief view inside a Tesla police car. I think it's pretty clear and obvious that this is the way forward for most police departments. It's just a matter of how long it takes them to realize it and then how long they have to wait to actually get their hands on one. Elon said that he will personally be driving the program for Tesla's bot Optimus, as is the case for almost all new programs. Dave Lee then shared some questions that he wanted to ask Elon about his insistence to drive almost all of these new programs. And Elon said, Dave, I know you're a fan, but this is a silly question. I don't drive programs because I want to, but because I have to. All I wanna say about this for now is over the weekend, there was a lot of uber bullish talk about Optimus and the Tesla bot and it resulting in Tesla hitting 20 trillion, 100 trillion. There have been some wild numbers thrown around. And look, in the long, long term, we're talking like 2040, 2050, sure. That's absolutely a possibility. However, I don't want people getting carried away thinking that this decade, that's something that should be expected. I personally think that Tesla will have more delays and challenges in figuring out Optimus, just like it has with solving full self-driving. It turned out to be a much harder problem to solve. I would not be surprised if that's the case with Optimus. Even simple tasks like getting a robot to interact with an object, say picking up a box and then moving and walking and knowing how to set it down and balance itself, 
I just think it's gonna be more complicated than some people are suggesting. So just as always, proceed with caution and we'll see how it plays out. Not to put a damper on the party, I still think like I said before in last week's videos, the potential is massive and Tesla will figure it out. It just might take longer than some people are expecting. As mentioned, don't worry, we'll talk about this more in depth in future videos. And this week, don't forget, Ford will announce its fourth quarter earnings after Thursday's close, and we'll have GM announcing earnings after tomorrow's close. That's gonna wrap it up for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.